Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to break down the pros and cons of Guardiola's tactical approach and Man City's 4-3 win over Newcastle. When we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Man City starting in a 4-3-3 and Newcastle in a 3-5-2 that ultimately was a 5-3-2. So first we're going to break down how City looked to approach the game in possession because this was about how they could break down Newcastle. And then we'll focus on the issues that they encountered and how they looked to overcome them. So similar to what we've seen this season, when City did have possession, they dropped off into a three-man backline and you ended up seeing Ake, Garcia, and Walker tuck in narrow and Cancelo was pushing a bit higher up the pitch and at times he was in a narrow position as well. That meant that Rodri did sit ahead of that back three and when you focus on the midfield duo you had Gundogan pushing just ahead of Willock and Shelby and Bernardo Silva looking to receive the ball on the outside of Almiron. Gabriel Jesus was occupying the center backs, and then in the wider area, Sterling and Ferran Torres were holding the touchline. However, we did witness some variation in positions out in the wider areas. For instance, if Sterling was ahead of Murphy and Kraft, Cancelo would be pushing high on the touchline, and if at times we saw Sterling shifting towards the touchline ahead of Murphy to get on the ball, Cancelo would be narrow, and that's when you would see Gundogan pushing forward to occupy Kraft. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, Fredan Torres was often hugging the touchline ahead of Richie, and Bernardo Silva was looking to pick up the ball on the outside of Almiron and slide it into the path of Torres before looking to make a run beyond Richie, but Dummett did a good job of tracking that movement, and Almiron did a very good job of shifting across to make it 1v2 against Torres. With Kyle Walker not looking to push higher up the pitch from a right-back position, there were times where we did see Bernardo Silva shifting towards the touchline, but then he would would be outnumbered 1v2 against Almiron, and you would see Ferran Torres looking to push forward just ahead of Dummett, but what you end up seeing there was that there was often always a 3v2, and there were times where Shelby would shift across to make it a 4v2. And then on the occasion where you had both Ferran Torres and Sterling hugging the touchline, you could see Joelinton and San Maximon sitting in between Rodri, and that's where you would have Gabriel Jesus in a 1v3 against the center backs, and that's when you would often see Gundogan pushing beyond Shelby and Willock to step into the path of Kraft and Fernandez to ensure that City had two attacking players in central positions. And then if Kinsella looked to push forward with the ball from a narrow inside left position, Willock would step forward to close him down. So essentially, City's attacking shape was a 3-1-3-3. But if Gundogan pushed higher to occupy Kraft and Kinsella was operating from an inside left position looking to tuck in narrow, that ended up shifting to a 3-2-5. It was important that Willock stepped forward to close down Cancelo because he was looking to operate as a creator from that midfield zone and looking to play balls over the top. And that meant that if Willock stepped towards Cancelo, Almiron would be closing down Bernardo. You'd have two strikers in between Rodri. And then you'd question how City would get service into Gundogan and Gabriel Jesus. The biggest issue here was that both wide players were looking to cut in centrally, and Torres struggled to get the better of Almiron and Richie when Bernardo Silva gave him the ball and looked to run into space behind the wing back. Over on the right hand side, you witness Almiron shifting across to help out Richie against Ferran Torres, while Bernardo Silva looks to push into right half space, but you have Shelby and Dummett shifting across to provide cover. Now we end up seeing Ferran Torres get on the ball ahead of Richie, and Almiron doing a good job of tracking the movement of Bernardo Silva while Shelby and Dummett wait in right half space and look at that penalty area. You only have Gabriel Jesus and Gundogan breaking into the box around six Newcastle players. And even if City got help from let's say Gundogan, look at Newcastle's shape. They have Dummett, Richie, and Almiron ahead of Bernardo Silva and Ferran Torres and that's where you see Fernandez and Shelby shifting across to make it a 5v3. And then over on the left-hand side, Willock did a very good job of dropping off deeper to help out Murphy and ensure that it was 1v2 as well, but Sterling simply struggled to win that battle when he looked to cut central. So a combination of City's attacking approach and Newcastle's defensive base shape ensured that Guardiola's men struggled to create chances. And the only avenue where City consistently enjoyed success was when their wide players got into 1v1 positions and looked to break on the outside of the Newcastle wingbacks. 
and when Gundogan looked to make runs behind Murphy to get on the ball in those zones. So initially we have Gundogan on the ball and you have Cancelo to his left and that's where you can see Murphy and Willock who are looking to step forward to apply pressure but let's focus on Cancelo. As Gundogan places the ball onto his right foot, you could see Willock stepping late, and that's when Cancelo is looking to make a run beyond Murphy into left half space. Gundogan ends up sliding the ball across Willock into the path of Cancelo's run, and as he pulls out Kraft towards the byline, you have Ferran Torres making a run across Fernandez, and Sterling also unmarked. Cancelo looks to pull the ball back to Ferran Torres, but he's only able to stab his effort inches wide of the net. If we focus on City's left side once again, it's Sterling ahead of Murphy with Willock just in behind the wing back for cover, and Sterling has Cancelo as a passing option. Sterling opts to drop the ball off back to Cancelo and that's where you could see him looking to begin to make a run off Murphy in behind and you see Willock and Murphy ball watching. That enables Cancelo to locate Sterling's run and he ends up splitting both Newcastle players for Sterling to run at Kraft who shifts across and that's where you see Gabriel Jesus who could make a run across Fernandez, and you also have the run of Gundogan in a deeper position. But from that zone, Sterling's cross is blocked. Meanwhile, when we briefly focus on the issues that City encountered against Newcastle, it was simply down to their defensive shape when Newcastle won the ball and looked to break in transition. What we should be seeing is that because Cancelo is pushing forward, Ake should be shifting across and Garcia should be moving central with Walker narrow and that would ensure that City has cover out in the channels. This has been a reoccurring theme for City and it's been a key component to their success and the manner in which they've been able to get Cancelo into attacking positions. However here the biggest issue that City encountered was that when they lost the ball the two Newcastle forwards were looking to make runs in behind the City defense immediately and then they had help from Almiron and Willock who were looking to make runs in into that zone as Gundogan and Bernardo Silva were often caught higher up the pitch. Following a craft interception, you could witness Ake out of position as he was looking to make a forward run into the box, and that's where you see both Newcastle strikers running off Rodri and Walker who are ball watching. When Kraft clips the ball over Cancelo, that's where you end up seeing Sant Maximan looking to run across Garcia into right half space as Joelinton is running just in behind Walker. That ultimately results in Sant Maximan running 1v1 against Garcia and it creates a lane for Joelinton to break to the back post as Walker shifts across to provide cover. When the ball is switched to Joelinton, it places him in a 1v1 with Walker, who gives up a lot of space in left half space for Joelinton to get the ball onto his left foot. But as he does look to take Walker on 1v1, the right back does a very good job of cutting off that angle as he looks to fire his effort across Carson, and he makes the block that ultimately results in the corner that leads to Newcastle's opener. Later on in the half, we witness Sant Maximon beginning to build a counterattack as Garcia's caught out of position, and you could witness Almiron looking to run off Bernardo into the gap between Cancelo and Walker, who are also advanced. When Sant Maximon splits the city fullbacks, it places Almiron in a position where he is able to break beyond Walker to set him free on goal. What happens next is that he cuts across Walker and that's where he locates Willock looking to make a forward run into the left channel just in beyond Ferran Torres. That results in Almiron carrying the ball forward and Willock's run takes away Torres and Walker into the left channel. What happens next is that you can see Ake chasing Almiron and he looks to take his touch across Ferran Torres and that results in Ake making a last ditch tackle that leads to the free kick that Shelby rattles off the bar. At the end of the first half, you witness Almiron carrying the ball across Bernardo Silva that pulls out Rodri as Walker's retreating and you witness Joelinton making a run into space behind Rodri. When Joelinton receives the ball, Rodri does close him down, but focus on Almiron now darting into the left channel as Walker was pulled central. Joelinton ends up sliding the ball into the path of Almiron, and when the Newcastle midfielder does receive the ball, he pulls out Walker, but that's when you can see Sant Maximon making a run between Garcia and Ake into space behind the city backline, as there's no cover out in the wider areas. That run results in Sant Maximon dragging out both center backs towards the edge of the box, and that's where you can see Willock making a run off Cancelo into the penalty area, and watch what happens next. 
Sam Maximon doesn't play the ball into Willock when he ends up squaring it into the path to Joelinton, but look at the chaos that they've created. Sam Maximon has dragged three city players to the ball and Willock's dragged away Cancelo. As Joelinton breaks into the city penalty area, it now forces Cancelo to desperately step forward and look at Ake trying to get across to provide cover. Joelinton skips by Cancelo, and then he's closed down by a lunging Ake, who ends up taking him out, and that results in the penalty that leads to Newcastle's equalizer. In terms of the second half, the only real subtle tactical tweaks we witnessed initially was Sterling's narrow position in between Murphy and Kraft, or Kraft and Fernandez, while Cancelo was pushing higher up the pitch down the left-hand side, whereas when we shift to the right-hand side, Bernardo Silva was pushing higher up the pitch to occupy Dummett, and Walker was moving in into Newcastle's third in an inside right position as well. Nevertheless, while Newcastle's running continued to cause City problems in that second half, it forced Guardiola to immediately shift his attacking shape by having Ferran Torres moving to the center of the pitch and occupying the center backs, and Gabriel Jesus shifting out to the right. That gave City a new attacking dimension with Gabriel Jesus looking to break towards the byline rather than cutting in central like Ferran Torres. And in that central area, Ferran Torres proved to be a more decisive poacher than Gabriel Jesus. Following Pep's positional rotation, you witness Gabriel Jesus ahead of Richie and Almiron shifting across to make it a 1v2. What happens next is Jesus runs beyond Almiron and focus on Ferran Torres unmarked in the box because Gundogan and Walker occupying three Newcastle defenders. Unlike Ferran Torres in a wide position, Jesus carries the ball towards the byline, and because three Newcastle defenders are occupied in the six-yard box, it allows him to play the ball across Richie and dumb it into the path of Ferran Torres, who stabs a first-time effort beyond Dubravka. So as you can see, Newcastle's front two and midfield shuttlers created issues for City in transition by breaking into space that Guardiola's men left vacant as they pushed several men forward in attack. And Guardiola was forced to use the width out in those wider areas to get his players towards the byline. And that's where Guardiola's men created their best openings against Newcastle's 5-3. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.